Artrex Denther Productions. Artrex Denther Productions. Artrex Denther Productions. Howdy, y'all. My name is Artrex Denther, and I'm here to give a short review and beginner's guide to Risk of Rain. Now, Risk of Rain has become my absolute favorite game to play of late. Steam claims I've put 43 hours into it. It's a game that takes about an hour to play each time, so it's got some hooks for me. So, what is it? It's a roguelite platformer. If you've played Spelunky or Rogue Legacy, you have kind of a broad baseline for what we're looking at here, but this game distinguishes itself pretty well in a couple of ways. First of all, as you can kind of tell, it's got a sci-fi theme going on, uh, which is really cool, kind of a little bit refreshing in the roguelite uh, genre. And uh, more importantly, though, it's got some of the most satisfying combat I've played in, like, any game recently. Um, really good stuff. Um, it's also very much a YASD game, yet another stupid death. If you die, at least for me, I feel like it was completely my fault. It doesn't feel unfair at all. And at the same time, it's hugely, hugely difficult. It's, you know, it's not a Souls game by any means, but it takes a lot to, it takes a lot to get this game to work, which is why I wanted to make this video. I think it doesn't really signpost well what you need to do in order to become better at the game. So I wanted to give a little introduction to what you want to look at going in, what can make it less of a giant wall. It's nowhere near as complicated as like the Soul series or the Monster Hunter series, but there is a little bit of opaqueness to start off. So let's get started. One of the things you'll notice is that I have over here about 12 different characters to select from, one of which I haven't unlocked. When you first open this, you'll only see the commando available, which is kind of sad. Um, the enforcer and the bandit aren't too, too hard to unlock. Uh, the enforcer, specifically, you need to defeat three particular different bosses uh, throughout different games. The bandit, you need to get past level three. That's going to take you a while, but it is pretty straightforward. The others, you're going to want to look up on a wiki when you get to that, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother looking up how to get the other guys until you've at least gotten the bandit, because at that point, you're pretty good at the game. But, let's start off with the commando. You'll see an explanation of his abilities here, but I'll go into them on planet. So here we are on a planet that hates us. We need to find the teleporter. That's a standard of every level in the game, except for the very last one. And what we have to defend ourselves is all these abilities down here. Double tap, that's your no cooldown basic ability, does a decent amount of damage. Full Metal Jacket is a bigger damage dealer that takes a little bit to cool down, does a bit of knock knockback. Uh, suppressive Fire, your fourth ability here is your other damage dealer, also does a little bit of damage, and it can shoot in both directions if there's guys on either side of him. And your best friend is your Tactical Dive, this third ability here, that makes you just a little bit faster, and it makes you invincible to damage for that little period where he's rolling. That's a lifesaver. Use that all the time. And really, that kind of gives you a bit of the flavor of how to play this game and not die. As you can kind of already tell, pretty much everything is bigger than you, and it's not like that's just for show. Everything is going to be... They'll have less health than you, but they do a lot of damage. So, you'll notice I haven't got hit yet. That is the way to play this game. If you get hit by anything, well, you know, you won't die immediately. Thankfully, it's not like Spelunky. That's one of the annoying things about that game in particular, is that you're likely to get killed randomly by things. But, almost everything in this game does a chunk of damage to you. And that's going to be... And that's going to lead into another thing you'll want to do as you go on and learn how to play the game, is you really need to memorize, or at least get familiar with, how enemies attack. Again, not a Souls game. You don't really need to, like, look at this particular enemy and spend 10 minutes memorizing exactly what its attack pattern is. But you do want to have a general sense of how to avoid taking hits. 
And also, like I'm doing here, take advantage of situations where you can attack an enemy with complete impunity. And one of the reasons you want to be attacking enemies with impunity as much as possible is that you get gold, and gold allows you to go to things like these shrines and potentially get items. Now these shrines specifically don't drop items all the time, but there are crates around that always will. They'll be a little more expensive. You notice over here there's a leveling system. Getting a level is not nearly as important as getting another item. The items make you powerful. Never pass up getting an item or paying for something when you can. Except maybe shrines, because they only sometimes give you items. It may sound like a bad deal to those of you who are averse to gambling, but they pay out 50% of the time and usually you run out of you run out of for sure things on a level before you run out of money. So eventually, might as well go to the shrines and pick some stuff up. Now, over here, this red glowing thing is the teleporter. It looks the same in almost every level. And one of the things you want to do whenever you're playing Risk of Rain is try to find the teleporter as quickly as possible. Because you can see up in the upper right here, there's this clock that's going up as you as you play. Every three minutes, every five minutes, excuse me, it's going to tick up this difficulty meter, and it'll make the game more difficult. Starts at very easy, goes all the way up ten levels to a level called Ha 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 Ha, at which point things get really crazy. And in fact, it gets it it continues to get harder after that tenth level. Um, it just doesn't visually increase the scale. Uh, I got killed one time not knowing that because I just assumed that things wouldn't get any harder, and they did, and I died. Uh, but anyway, each level you want to get to the teleporter and you activate it. The teleporter has to warm up for 90 seconds, and for you to pass the time while you're waiting for that, the game gives you a huge boss. The uh, kind of most basic one of which is currently about to try and kill me. Thankfully, the Colossus is a pretty decently easy boss to beat, as bosses go, because he's really slow. If you can, again, like I was saying with the other enemies, if you can just avoid getting hit by him entirely, he's not too much of a problem. The real problem here is going to be that the game, during these 90 seconds, is going to spawn enemies at a ridiculous rate. So, but... The good thing for you is that after the 90 seconds are over, the game stops spawning enemies for the level entirely, and so you can take them out at your leisure. The downside to that, um, the downside to taking a while to defeat them is, of course, that you'll increase the difficulty once you get to the next level, but the upside to it is you'll be alive. I strongly recommend that you run as much as you as much as you feel you need to and then run a little more until you're in a really safe situation to beat things unless you're feeling really confident once you get to the point where you can get to higher levels then you definitely want to try and speed run the first level um, because it'll be very important later on but when you're starting out the game I can pretty much guarantee that you're not going to get particularly far and I can absolutely guarantee you won't beat the game in a single run. So there's that. One of the one of the keys to getting better at the game, as I've kind of implied, is definitely uh, getting comfortable with the way things move, the way certain enemies attack, the way you attack. You can see one of the chains I like to do is use your roll to get out of the way, then knock them back with both of the other cooldown attacks. And then you just shoot away until they catch up to you, and then you run away. Thankfully, throughout most of the game, you're pretty much as fast as anything around you. You just don't want to get surrounded. Okay, so now the timer, now that the timer is finished, you notice it tells you how many enemies are left and gives you a little yellow arrow pointing to enemies. And unfortunately, that's not just for show, or for showing off that you defeated all the enemies, the teleporter actually will not work until you've killed everything. 
But that's not an entirely bad thing. That means you get more money to buy more items, which, as I've said, are about the most important thing you can do. All right. Seven more. I think they're all in this area. Those things are all a little bit on the heavy side. I kind of want to... This will take too long for comfort, but going in and attacking them is also not comfortable. That green wisp especially is a pain. Everything else I can just kind of jump around and keep stunning. But ranged things are really a pain in this game. If you can take those out, do so. And if you can't, or if you're not sure, avoid them. <laughs> The enemies whenever I get near them, and we're just down to the Colossus himself, who is thankfully really slow and thinks I'm in the air. The one thing about the Colossus is that he does actually spawn other enemies even when the clock is done, but the little Colossi are also pretty slow. Alright, and bosses drop items, which is nice. So now enemies will drop extra gold for me so I can buy more items. All right. So now I have $500. If I were to step on that teleporter now, I would lose all that money. It would be converted into experience points, but as I said, items are a lot better than getting a level. So I'm going to try this again. This thing gives me an item if I can kill all these imps in the allotted time. Commando's not too bad for killing imps, because he's nicely ranged. Oh, interesting. 56 Leaf Clover. A lot of the items in this game are completely ridiculous, and there are, there are a lot of them, so there's no real point in trying to actually memorize them at this point. Uh, especially because almost all of them are just going to be really good in some way. Especially with the Commando. He has a pretty fast um, attack speed. Um, there are some items that don't work well with characters that have a low attack speed, but you won't have to worry about that for a while. The other, uh, the other thing that will help, uh, especially with finding the teleporter quickly, is that unlike a lot of similar games like Spelunky, the levels in this game are not randomly or procedurally generated. Uh, they're randomly picked, but there's only about six different static layouts uh, that you'll have for level one. And that actually gets less and less as the levels go on. There's like uh, four or five different level twos. There's only probably four level threes. And um, when you get to level six, there's it's always the exact same map because the final level, uh, which is itself called Risk of Rain, is actually your ship. And that's the same every time. Uh, but I definitely, as you're playing through the first level, and probably dying repeatedly, like I did uh, when I was starting out, you'll want to definitely get a feel for what the levels look like so that you can you know, bounce back and forth between the two different sides of the level, climb up and down all the ladders until you find the teleporter. And then if you feel like you need to grind levels or get items before facing the final boss, at least you'll know where the teleporter is uh, so that you don't waste too much time. All right, so now I'm at the second level. Uh, and I'll stop that here. I think, um, you should be able to get a good handle on the game uh, if you follow that advice. Uh, the, second, the second level and beyond uh, end up being kind of more of the same. So, uh, 
uh, just increasingly harder, of course. And and so just uh, keep on learning all the new enemies, get comfortable with items, learn all the levels, and hopefully you'll pretty quickly get to that third level, get some new characters, um, and I hope you'll enjoy the game as much as I have. And I hope you enjoyed this video. You can kind of tell I'm a new YouTuber, probably, uh, but if you did like the video, I would appreciate it if you would rate the video, give it a comment, maybe even subscribe, and I'll try to put out some more stuff. Uh, thanks again for watching. This is Artrex Denther, signing off.